Hello, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, you can see the presentation. Yes, sir. Right, okay, fine. Let's start. <coughs> Today, uh, we have only one area to cover. I think I have covered the entire syllabus. Uh, normally, I don't have the time to cover the entire thing, but this time, because of the COVID and all those things, uh, anyway, we managed to cover the entire syllabus. So my plan is to uh, finish the discussing of URR 725, that is Uniform Rules for Bank-to-Bank -bank Reinvestment. And then, uh, because this also I have seen a few questions in the past papers. And then, uh, if time permits, I will try to do at least one or two uh, facility sums. And I hope that you all have done the forex questions. We discussed about four or five last week, and I asked you to do the balance run. Uh, if possible today, I will try to discuss the uh, facility sums. If not, next week definitely we will cover the facility sums as well as the forex balance sums finish. After that, uh, we have to discuss two past papers. <coughs> have I given you some uh, what they call this uh, multiple choice questions to you few multiple choice questions to you have I given you yes or no so there are four questions. Sir. Four questions. Yes, sir. At the end of this uh, tube, sir, you are at seven two five. Is that one, sir? No, 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 no. No, no, no. In that case, uh, what I will do is I will load some questions uh, by Tuesday or Wednesday, so that you have enough time. Uh, yeah. You all should go through the. Uh, upload advance and start doing the thing then we can discuss it the next week right okay uh, uniform rules for bank to bank reimbursement this is covered by two icc publications one is urr 725 that is uniform rules for bank to bank reimbursement what is the other one the one I have discussed with you. Bank to bank reimbursement is covered under another ICC regulation. And what is that regulation and what is the article? <laughs> Nobody can answer that question. Uh, bank to bank reimbursement is covered by UCP 600, UCP 600 also. UCP 600, Article 13. Article 13, 1 3. Right? Please read the article. UCP 600. And when we open the LCs, if you are not mentioning, if you are not mentioning, uh, URR 725 under reimbursement, then it will automatically covered by UCP 600 Article 30. Right? Okay. Anyway, when we open LCs, that is MT 700 is subject to UCP 600. So it's automatically covering the UCP 600 Article 13. If not, we give special instruction under special instructions 
and the reimbursement instructions we say uh, this lc the reimbursement is covered by urr 75 then this particular um, instructions will be applicable what does urr 725 mean and then now urr 725 i think you have to go uh, you have to get a printout from the uh, google right uh, you can get a uh, just type urr 725 then you, you can get the printout get a printout and study because i never thought they will discuss certain articles in your examination papers but last few papers i have seen they are specifically asking certain articles right for that you have to have url 75 at least you should have gone through it two three times right but anyway uh to what i'm trying to do is to cover the 17 articles and finish it off so that it will be easy for you to read when you download the uh, when you download the uh, URR 725 right what does URR 725 mean the URR 725 are the uniform rules for bank to bank reimbursement under documentary credits ICC publication number 725 URR 725. Before that, it was URR 525. Now, the latest version or the current version is URR 725. URR 725 was approved by the ICC National Committee at the ICC Banking Commission in April 2008. So that means April 2008 means after the implementation of UCP 600. UCP 600 came into effect from 2007. Now this one came into effect from 2008. So URR 725 is compatible with the UCP 600. And any moment UCP 700 is coming. Now when UCP 700 is coming, by now, they have done the revision. The revision is ready for the new URR. New URR. I don't know what it will be. Maybe URR 925 or something. <coughs> right? Now, URR 725 is an updated version of previous rules for bank-to-bank -bank reimbursement known as URR 525. The revision was necessary to bring those uh, long-standing rules into conformity with UCP 600. That's what I have told you, right? Because ICC's universally used rules on letters of credit, that is UCP 600. So to be in conformity with the UCP 600, this URR 525 was revised and renamed under uh, URR 725. Right? What is the scope of URR 725? The uniform rules for bank to bank reimbursement under documented credit ICC publication number 725 shall apply to any bank to bank reimbursement under documented credits. When the reimbursement authorization expressly indicates that it is subject to these rules. But reimbursement authorization should expressly indicate that the reimbursement is subject to URR 725, right? The rules are binding on all parties there too, unless expressly modified or excluded by the reimbursement authority, uh, authorization, reimbursement authorization, right? If, if the LC is not mentioning about the underlying reimbursement authority then it will be subject to article 13 of ucp 600 right 
So that is why I have, I have asked you to go through Article 13 first. That's only uh, a few sections you have to study. A, B, C only, right? And then that will be a good foundation for you to start the URR 725. Since I have done Article 13 with you, I'm not going to repeat it again. How URR 725 can be applied to bank-to-bank -to -bank reimbursement under documented credit? Right? URR 725, the Uniform Rules for Bank-to-Bank -bank Reimbursement, the issuing bank is responsible for indicating in the documented credit that the reimbursement is subject to URR 725. This is what I, I was repeat, repeatedly I am telling the same thing. Right? We have to mention it under reimbursement uh, fee. As a result, both MT700 issue of a documentary credit and MT740 authorization to reimburse swift messages must indicate the applicable rule. Right? Now, when we issue the LC, we issue the LC under MT700. MT700. That MT700 will go to the beneficiary bank. And in that MT700, if we have mentioned that the reimbursement, bank-to-bank -bank reimbursement is subject to URR 725, then the issuing bank has to generate another SWIFT message that is coming under MT740, authorization to reimburse, MT740. And then that message will go to the reimbursing bank, giving them the authorization to reimburse okay any questions so far any questions so far under mt700 swift message if we say normally we say you are our latest version URR latest version. When you mention URR latest version, what is the URR latest version? What is the URR latest version? Come on. Open up your mouth. Seven two five. Seven two five. 75. So uh, even if you don't put 75, if you say you are our latest version, that is understood. Right? Or not URR are the options regarding the reimbursement. Not URR. Then what is applicable? Then what is applicable? Not URR. Hmm? Not URR means that not URR rules, but UCP 600 Article 13 will apply to the bank to bank reimbursement. We put it carry the get then. Not URR. That means then the applicable rule is UCP 600 Article 13. URR latest version means URR rules will apply to the Bank to bank reimbursement. Right? Okay. Table of contents of URR 75, there are uh, 17 articles. 17 articles covering the application of URR and the interest claims and loss of value. Just try to understand this. Workflow, workflow chart. 
take about two minutes, study this. Okay, right. When the issuing bank issues the LC, that is the step one. They issue the LC and then MT700 will be advised to the advising or confirming bank. Right? This reimbursement matter is only concerning LCs, not collection, huh? only concerning LCs. Why, why only LCs? Can somebody give me an answer for that? Why only LCs? Why not uh, collection? by only LCs. Hmm? Because if the documents are complied with the terms and conditions of the LC, the issuing bank has given an irrevoc irrevocable undertaking. And the advising or confirming bank or negotiation bank, they, if the documents are complied with the terms and conditions, they don't have to wait till the issuing banks send the money. They will advance the money to the beneficiary. That's what we call negotiation. And if we have given the reimbursement authority, then before the documents goes to the issuing bank, they will already claim the money from the reimbursing bank. Right? Okay. Now, the issuing bank issues the LC and advise the advising or confirming bank. And then Immediately, immediately with that, they will send the reimbursement authorization to the reimbursing bank. Now, reimbursing bank is a bank domicile other than the issuing bank's country and maybe, maybe uh, advising bank, uh, confirming bank's country. The reason is, it depends on your correspondent relationship with that particular bank. Now, for example, uh, if the LC currency is US dollars, then always, always the reimbursing bank should be a bank in New York. A bank in New York. Right? If the LC currency is sterling, then the reimbursing bank should be a bank in UK. Right? If the reimbursing, uh, sorry, if the LC currency is Japanese, in, then the reimbursing bank should be a bank in Tokyo. It is like that. Then, uh, now, for example, if you say issuing bank, okay, 
are there any bankruptcy law guys in the class are there any bank of sound guys in the class the if you are a banker you should be able to answer the question you have to have a backbone to answer the question yes so no right yes so no now this is why we are wasting a lot of time and you are wasting your valuable time of learning when i ask a question if you are not giving the answer so the question i ask is are there any students working in bank of sri lanka if not can somebody volunteer to tell me which bank he is working or he or she which bank rather than me asking the 26 banks for the way we'll call it a day if you can't answer i mean sampath banks now you are in sampath bank right anybody else but i am losing my temper i am trying to explain it to you but if you people are little bit tapish i i told you several times last time also i told that right i think you haven't learned any lesson but you are dealing with the wrong person or if not you can attend any other classes no issue right i'm trying to explain it to you in simple sampath bank all the people are in sampath bank or bullshit from hnb sir hnb now hnb what is your correspondent bank in uh, new york do you know what is your correspondent bank in new york any idea doshi doshi bank okay doshi bank sampath bank what is your correspondent bank in new york classic again hmm uh, doshi bank and there are i think uh, uh, new york uh, some i can't remember well sir uh city not city i don't think city but i'm sure doshi yes and standard chartered yeah ah uh, right so if you say standard chartered or doshi right if sampad bank is the issuing bank sampad bank or the customer is in dubai bank of dubai Uh, sorry uh, dubai bank dubai bank you advise uh, you advise lc to dubai bank and you send the reimbursement authorization to your correspondent bank in new york that is standard chartered new york your reimbursing bank is standard chartered new york so all your transaction should go through standard chartered new york dollar transaction right so always it is domiciled in a neutral country where you get the uh, correspondent relationship right then when the dubai bank when the dubai bank uh receives the documents receive the document from the beneficiary the or the exporter they check it and they found the documents are compliant with the terms and conditions of the lc so then they will 
send a reimbursement claim as per the instructions given by the uh, LC. They will send a reimbursement claim to the reimbursing bank mentioned in the LC. They mention, uh, some part bank has mentioned, your reimburse, please claim reimbursement from some uh, standard chartered bank. New York. So they, they claim money from uh, reimbursing bank. Then the reimbursing bank, Standard Chartered New York, when they receive the claim, they will do the payment. They will effect the payment to uh, Dubai Bank. Right? Still, the documents have not been checked by the issuing bank because uh, the third item three, the third step is the presentation of documents to the issuing bank. Meanwhile, they will simultaneously, they will claim the money from the uh, reimbursing bank. Immediately, they will pay. Within one day, they will pay. The following day, your account, your nostra account is been credited. Right? This is how the reimbursement is happening. But now you will understand when you see this uh, uh, flowchart, you will understand this is high risk operation. High risk operation. If the advising bank or if the confirming bank uh, claim the money, claim the money from the re reimbursing bank for non-compliant documents or non-compliant documents then it will be a big issue right so that risk is there now we will see how we are going to mitigate those risks article 1 article 1 application of URR 725 right URR 725 shall apply to any bank to bank reimbursement when the text of the reimbursement authorization expressly indicates that it is subject to these rules. I have given only a summary here. You better download the URR 725 and read the whole thing. Right? The issuing bank is responsible for indicating in the documentary credit that Reimbursement is subject to these rules. Right? The reimbursing bank acts on the instructions and under the authority of the issuing bank. Now, reimbursing bank always acts on the uh, instructions and under the authority of the issuing bank. Right? Okay. Article 2. Definitions. There are a few definitions you have to understand. One is issuing bank, reimbursing bank, what is reimbursement authorization, what is reimbursement amendment, claiming bank, like that. There are a few definitions you have to understand. That is, for the purpose of these rules, branches of a bank in different countries are considered to be separate. Right? Are there anybody from Standard Chartered in this class? Anybody from Standard Chartered? Nobody? Okay. Mm. This is strange. That means standard chartered crowd is not interested in studying. Because I'm sure I'm sure every year from 2011 I'm going to convocations 
I can see Stanley Chartered. Girls and boys are. Um, walking up to the um, stage and getting their um, degrees. Right? I don't know to whose classes they are attending. How do you understand the chat here? Hmm. Right. Now, uh, if Stanley Chartered Colombo issue the LC, then who will be their correspondent bank, their reimbursing bank? Just guess who will be their reimbursing bank. Now, Sampath Bank said Standard Chartered New York. For Standard Chartered Colombo, who will be the corresponding bank or the reimbursing bank? Um, huh? Bank which is in uh, New York. Yeah. Not their one. Not their one. Oh my God! When they ha when they have a, their own bank in uh, New York, why should they Are go? They... Why should they go for another bank? Their correspond their reimbursing bank is Standard Chartered New York, obviously, right? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but for the purpose of these rules, the Standard Chartered Colombo. And Standard Chartered New York, we consider as two separate banks. We consider as two separate banks, right? That's what I want to tell you under I. Under definitions, the issuing bank means the bank that issued a credit and the reimbursement authorization under that credit, right? Then reimbursing bank means the bank instructed or authorized to provide reimbursement reimbursement pursuant to a reimbursement authorization issued by the issuing bank. So the reimbursing bank means the bank instructed or authorized to provide the reimbursement by the issuing bank. Right? Reimbursement authorization. We saw in that chart, reimbursement authorization has to be issued by the issuing bank, but it has to be received by the reimbursement bank. So reimbursement authorization means an instruction or authorization, independent of the credit, independent of the credit, issued by an issuing bank to a reimbursing bank to reimburse a claiming bank. So they have given the okay to the reimbursing bank to pay the claim in bank whenever they get the claim. Right? Reimbursement undertaking. Reimbursement undertaking. We have not discussed this so far. Reimbursement undertaking means a separate irrevocable undertaking of the reimbursing bank. Now, every bank, every issuing bank, should send a reimbursement authorization, MT740, to the reimbursing bank. That's a must. In some cases, when they received the MT740 reimbursement authorization, they will send, reimbursing bank will send a reimbursement undertaking. Reimbursement undertaking. Right? Issued upon the authorization or request of the issuing bank to the claiming bank. They send the reimbursement undertaking to the claiming bank or that's a negotiating bank. Right? So they, in other words, they inform the uh, nominated bank 
that they are ready to pay, ready to pay or ready to settle the uh, reimbursement claim if they, once they received, they are prepared to honor it, reimbursement undertaking, right? To honor that banker's reimbursement claim, provided the terms and conditions of the reimbursement undertaking have been complied with. Claim in bank. Claim in bank means a bank that honors or negotiates credit and presents a reimbursement claim to the reimbursing bank. Right? Claim in bank includes a bank authorized to present a reimbursement claim to the reimbursing bank on, on behalf of the bank that honors are negotiated, right? Reimbursement amendment means an advice from issuing bank to reimbursing bank stating changes to a reimbursement authorization. So when they issue the uh, LC, they send the reimbursement authorization. Then subsequently, if the LCA is changed, amended, then the reimbursement authorization also should be amended, right? So, in a scenario like that, they will send the reimbursement authorization, uh, reimbursement amendment, reimbursement claim. Reimbursement claim means a request for reimbursement from the claiming bank to the reimbursing bank. Article 3, reimbursement authorizations versus credits. A reimbursement authorization is separate from the credit. Credit is in the is credit means LC yeah? separate from the LC to which it refers. And a reimbursing bank is not concerned with or bound by the terms and conditions of the credit. Very important. This uh, Issuing bank is send, when they send the reimbursement authorization, they have nothing to do with the LC. LC and reimbursement authorization is a two different thing. We are not bothered about the terms and conditions of the LC. Right? We are only bothered about if we received a claim that we will pay. Okay. Article 4, honor of a reimbursement claim, except as provided by the terms of its reimbursement undertaking, a reimbursing bank is not obligated to honor a reimbursement claim, except as provided by the terms of its reimbursement undertaking, a reimbursing bank is not obligated to honor a reimbursement claim. Make a mark a second. Now, we have sent the reimbursement authorization to the reimbursing bank, but they are not obliged to, or they are not obligated to honor a reimbursement claim when they receive. Unless otherwise, they have already sent the reimbursement undertaking. Then they, then they are obligated. Once they, once they gave a reimbursement undertaking, then they are obligated. Otherwise, they are not obligated. But normally, uh, uh, there won't be any refusal like that. But according to the rule, rule article number four, they are not obligated. Yeah, there are instances where the embassy bank has not, uh, if they are not happy, if they are not happy, they will, they can easily refuse. Right? Article 5. Responsibility of the issuing bank. 
responsibility of the issuing bank for providing the information required in these rules in both the reimbursement authorization and the credit. Right? So, issuing bank is responsible for providing the information required in these rules in both the reimbursement authorization and the credit. For any consequences resulting from non-compliance with this provision. So, it is the responsibility of the issuing bank that they are, they are responsible for any consequences resulting from non-compliance with this provision. So, ultimate ownership is with the issuing bank, not with the reimbursing bank. Ultimate ownership is with the issuing bank. Article 6. Issuance and receipt of a reimbursement authorization or reimbursement amendment. Issuance and receipt of a reimbursement authorization or reimbursement amendment. All reimbursement authorizations and reimbursement amendments must be issued in the form of an authenticated teletransmission or a signed letter. Right? An issuing bank must not send to a reimbursing bank. An issuing bank must not send to a reimbursing bank. And make an organ with a mic examiners will have a test karna area. Right? They will say instead of sending the reimbursement authorization, they have sent a copy of the LC to the reimbursing bank. And thinking that they have already informed them. Right? You can't send copies of the LCs. It has to be a reimbursement authorization. A copy of the credit or any part thereof, or a copy of an amendment to the credit in place of or in addition to the reimbursement authorization or reimbursement amendment, right? To, so issuing bank must not send any copies. Then the, the second one, the issuing bank must not send multiple reimbursement authorizations under with one teletransmission or letter, unless expressly agreed by the reimbursing bank. We should not send multiple reimbursement authorization. About four or five uh, LCs, reimbursements, they merge everything in one MT740 and send the instructions. That is wrong. Each LC, we have to have a dedicated MT740. Then an issuing bank shall not require a certificate of compliance with the terms and conditions of the credit in the reimbursement. Right? An issuing bank shall not require a certificate of compliance. The may occur when a reimbursing bank in New York all automated. Hello. What is this noise? Right. All are automated. So once we send the reimbursement authorization, they update their system. So when they get a claim, the system will automatically check the LC number and the amount. And then they, they'll pay. Even if they get a claim from the negotiating bank, after the expiry of the LC, they will pay. 
because in the reimbursement authorization, we never give FC expiry date. Right? But if they have a claim and if you can prove, then later the issuing bank can claim the money from them. Later. But the risk is there that they will collect mm. for non compliant documents. Article 6 continued. Uh, D. A reimbursement authorization must state the following. Now, see what are the things we have to mention in a MT 740 reimbursement authorization. We have to mention the credit number, LC number, currency and amount, additional amounts payable and tolerance, if any. Right? Claiming bank or in the case of a freely advisable credit, freely advisable credit, that claims can be made by any bank. Right? In the absence of any such indication, the reimbursing bank is authorized to pay any claiming bank. Parties responsible for charges, claiming banks and reimbursing bank charges, right? Whose responsibility to pay charges, that those things we have to mention in the reimbursement authorization in accordance with the Article 16 of these rules. A reimbursement amendment must state only the relative changes to the above and the credit number. Right? Clear? Any questions on that? But if you don't have any yes, practical yes, experience. Yeah. Uh, what is uh, certificate of compliance mean? Certificate of compliance means the claiming bank, a claiming bank, right? Uh, they don't have to uh, send a certificate of compliance to the reimbursing bank to, to confirm that they are claiming on an LC which has been uh, the documents are complied to the terms and conditions of the LC. That, that certification they don't have to give. They don't have to give because whether it's complied or not, the claiming bank has claimed, the reimbursing bank will pay. That's it. They are not bothered about with this complied or not. So there's no need, there's no point and no need to send any certificate of compliance. Clear? Okay, sir. Thank you. Right. Okay. If the reimbursing bank is requested to accept and pay a time draft, the reimbursing reimbursement authorization must indicate the following in addition to the information specified in the Time draft and that time draft then in the right? Uh, if pre notification of a reimbursement claim or in a requirement for pre debit notification to the issuing bank must be included in the credit and not in the reimbursement authorization. The pre notification of a reimbursement claim, right? Or any Requirement for pre debit notification to the issuing bank must be included in the credit and not in the reimbursement authorization. Right? The summer letter uh, issuing banks, you know, before you claim reimbursement, please send us a pre notification. But it is not a must. Right? It is not a must. Why we have put a, why th those people are putting a clause like that is to, because they are not 100% sure about the claiming bank. That is why they are putting those conditions. Now, in the first instance, if you are not happy with the uh, integrity of the uh, claiming bank, then we should not give any reimbursement authorization. In simple. And then the right? <laughs> if 
Indonesian bank is not prepared to act for any reasons whatsoever under the reimbursement authorization or reimbursement amendment. It must so inform the issuing bank without delay. If they are not ready, they have to inform the issuing bank immediately. In addition to the provisions of Article 3 and 4, the reimbursing bank is not responsible for the consequences resulting from non-reimbursement or delay in reimbursement of reimbursement claims when any provisions contained in this article is not followed by the issuing bank or claiming bank. The reimbursing bank is not responsible for any delay on their part, right? Article 7, expiry of a reimbursement authorization. The reimbursement authorization should not be subject to an expiry date or latest date for presentation of a claim, except as indicated in Article 9. We should not put in expiry date for uh, claiming uh, to, to present a claim. We should not do uh, put any expiry dates. Right? Take a you know, UCP 600 Article 13. Article B, Article 13, B1, Article 13, B1, again, again, right, the reimbursement authorization should not be subject to an expiry date, even under UCP 600, it is stated, right, so the reimbursing bank is not bothered about whether it's expired or not, right, it is the claiming bank's obligations. The reimbursing bank will assume no responsibility for the expiry date of a credit. And if such date is provided in the reimbursement authorization, it will be disregarded. It will be disregarded, right? The issuing bank must cancel its reimbursement authorization for any unutilized portion of the credit to which it refers in forming the reimbursing bank without delay. The issuing bank must cancel its reimbursement authorization for any unutilized portion of the credit. You know, we know we have issued the LC for US dollars, 100,000. Partial shipments allowed. Partial shipments allowed. So, so two shipments have been received by the issuing bank. One is for 50,000, one is for 40,000. Now, we have already utilized 90,000. No more shipment. No more shipment. That means we have to cancel the LC. We have to cancel the LC. So when we are canceling the LC, at that time, we have to inform the reimbursing bank also to cancel the unutilized portions. To cancel the unutilized portions. Right? It is very important. Article 8. Amendment or cancellation of a reimbursement authorization. Where the reimbursing bank has issued a reimbursing reimbursement undertaking. The issuing bank 
may issue a reimbursement amendment or cancel a reimbursement authorization at any time upon sending notice to that effect to the reimbursing bank. The issuing bank must send notice of any amendment to a reimbursement authorization that has an effect on the reimbursement instructions contained in the credit to the nominated bank or in the case of a freely available credit, the advising bank. The issuing bank must reimburse the reimbursing bank for any reimbursement claims honored or draft accepted by the reimburse, reimbursing bank prior to the receipt of, of a notice of cancellation or reimbursement amendment. If, if you are going to cancel uh, such uh, balance portions, before that, issuing bank must ensure uh, that the reimburse, reimbursing bank has been properly reimbursed for what they have paid. Right? Okay. Reimbursement undertaking. Reimbursement undertaking must comply with the provisions of this article. Right? Who will issue the reimbursement undertaking? Which bank? Issuing bank? Uh, negotiating bank? Or reimbursing bank? Who will issue the reimbursement undertaking? Mm -hmm. Who will issue the reimbursement undertaking? Which bank? Reimbursing bank. Reimbursing bank. Very good. When they issue the reimbursement undertaking, in other words, they will confirm that they have received a reimbursement authorization based on that. If you send me the claim, I will pay. Right? So normally, reimbursement undertaking, these are the things it has to be contained. Credit number, currency and amount, additional amount payable, and tolerance, if any. Hmm? Full name and address of the claiming bank. To which the reimbursement undertaking should be issued, blah blah. All those things are there. If the reimbursing bank is requested to accept and pay a time draft, the irrevocable reimbursement authorization must also indicate the following in addition to the information contained in the in above. That means uh, this is for SWIFT and if it is a time draft, then these are the articles. But time draft, very rarely is happening. If the reimbursing bank is authorized or requested by the issuing bank to issue a reimbursement undertaking to the claiming bank, but is not prepared to do so, it must so inform the issuing bank without delay. That's a normal procedure. E, a reimburse, a reimbursement undertaking must indicate the terms and conditions of the undertaking. And the following things should be highlighted. The credit number and name of the issuing bank, the currency and the amount of the reimbursement authorization, blah blah. What you go call? Kiwat. Right? If the latest date for presentation of a claim, if the latest date for presentation of a claim falls on a day, when the reimbursing bank is closed for reasons other than those referred to in Article 15, 
the latest date for presentation of a claim will be extended to the first following banking day. You can use it 600 day or game. Right? A reimbursing bank is irrevocably bound to honor reimbursement claim as a time it issues the reimbursement undertaking. An irrevocable reimbursement authorization cannot be amended or cancelled without the agreement of the reimbursing bank. An irrevocable reimbursement authorization cannot be amended or cancelled without the agreement of the reimbursing bank. Right? Because once you give the reimbursement authorization, you can't just cancel, right? Unless otherwise you have the reimbursing bank's authorization. Article 10, standard for a reimbursement claim. Can you read the standard, the claim man's claim for reimbursement? What are the things to be included? Go through it. And if you have any questions, ask me. First, second, simple. Third, must separately stipulate the principal amount claimed. Any additional amount due and charges. Right? Must separately stipulate. First, we have to say that principal amount, with the, then if there's any uh, additional amount due and charges separately must not be a copy of the claiming bank's advice of payment, deferred payment or acceptance or negotiation to the issuing bank. Even if the reimbursement claim is not a claim, must not include multiple reimbursement claims under one teletransmission or letter. Right? We should not have any multiple reimbursement claims. Every transaction should have separately separate reimbursement claims. Six must, in the case of a reimbursement undertaking, comply with the terms and conditions of the reimbursement undertaking. Right? Okay. Article 11. Processing a reimbursement claim. Processing a reimbursement claim. A reimbursing bank shall have a when they make important make a good questions, especially multiple choice questions. Especially multiple choice MCQ questions. A reimbursing bank shall have a maximum of three banking days following the day of receipt of the reimbursement claim to process the claim. Right? Now Tell me, a negotiating bank or the issuing bank, what is the maximum banking days they have to check the documents and pay? Hmm. What are the maximum days to check the documents? Article 14, Article 14, 2. Article 14, 2. Article 14, B. What is the maximum banking days? My goodness, you are going to do the exam in another one month's time or two months' time. 
seen uh, some MCQ questions to say uh, a reimbursing, reimbursing bank shall have a, the maximum days for a peer claim. They will say uh, as answers 5, 3, 4, 7. So it is wrong. For reimbursement claims, it is maximum of three banking days. Right? Those are important things. If a pre-debit notification is required by the issuing bank, this pre-debit notification period shall be in advance to the processing period mentioned above. All right? If the reimbursing bank determines not to reimburse, either because of a non-conforming claim under reimbursement undertaking or for any reasons whatsoever under reimbursement authorization, it shall give notice to that effect by telecommunication. If they are not performing their job, they are being informed by telecommunication. Right? The reimbursing bank will not process a request for back value. When a reimbursing bank has not issued a reimbursement undertaking and a reimbursement is due on a future date, due on a future date, the reimbursement claim must specific, specify the predetermined reimbursement date. Right? Must specify the predetermined reimbursement date. The reimbursement claim should not be presented to the reimbursing bank more than 10 banking days prior to such predetermined date. Prior to such predetermined date. If reimbursement claim should not be presented to the reimbursing bank more than 10 banking days prior to such predetermined date. If the reimbursing bank disregards the reimbursement claim, it must so inform the claiming bank by teletransmission or other expeditious means without delay. Right? Article 12. Duplication of duplication of a reimbursement authorization. Right? Issuing bank must not, upon receipt of documents, right, give a new reimbursement authorization or additional instructions unless they constitute an amendment to or a cancellation of an existing reimbursement authorization. Issuing bank must not, upon receipt of documents, give a new reimbursement authorization or additional instructions unless they constitute an amendment to or cancellation of an existing reimbursement authorization. Right? 
ரீம்பர்சிபிலிட்டி or responsibility for any consequences that may arise from any such duplication reimbursement reimbursement bank they won't take in responsibility it is entirely the issuing bank's responsibility if it is get duplicated article 13 foreign laws and usages the issuing bank shall be bound by and liable to indemnify the reimbursing bank against all obligations and responsibilities imposed by foreign laws and usages article 14 disclaimer on the transmission of messages in ucp 600 also it is there but this is under urr 725 disclaimer A reimbursing bank assumes no liability. A reimbursing bank assumes no liability or responsibility for the consequences arising out of delay, loss in transit, mutilation, or other errors arising in the transmission of any messages. A reimbursing bank assumes no liability or responsibility for errors in translation or interpretation of technical terms. Make a hammer game, huh? Reimbursing bank gets a disclaimer. All these disclaimer clauses, right? They don't take in responsibility. Everything on their own is of issuing bank. Article fifteen, force measure. Force measure. A reimbursing bank assumes no liability or responsibility for the consequences arising out of the interruption of its business by acts of God, riots, blah blah. Okay, okay. Okay. Under the law, I get UCP six hundred again. Force measure. Eh, mama. Three no. Right. Okay. Article thirty-six again. UCP six hundred. Article thirty-six. Yeah. Also, we have the same thing. Article sixteen. Charges. A reimbursing bank charges are for the account of the issuing bank, not the claiming bank. Right. All charges paid by the reimbursing bank will be in addition to the amount of the authorization, provided that the claiming bank indicates the amount of such charges. If the issuing bank fails to provide the reimbursing bank with instructions regarding charges, all charges shall be for the account of the issuing bank. If the issuing bank fails to provide the reimbursing bank with instructions regarding charges, So whatever the charges, reimbursing bank uh, charge, it will be for the uh, debit of issuing bank. Issuing bank is responsible, right? Uh, now normally uh, those days about ten fifteen years back, the reimbursing banks 
by charging um, New York banks were charging about eighty-five dollars or something. Now I hear, now I heard that it has gone up to hundred and twenty, hundred and twenty-five dollars reimbursement charges. Right? Ema Karla reimbursing banks currently that, that is why uh, Sampath Bank uh, they are having Deutsche Bank as one of their reimbursing bank correspondent bank reimbursing banks then. Standard Chartered, you may be having Bankers Trust, I'm sure, right? So now we have three reimbursing banks. You know, between them, they have a fight. So Standard Chartered might tell you, okay, you use our reimbursing bank, right? Every reimbursement claim will give you five dollars rebate every reimbursement claim will give you five five dollars rebate so for a month if you use uh, if you send 100 reimbursement claims for a month right 100 reimbursement claims give 500 dollars bank ticket and now pnl Then the last on Article 17, interest claims and loss of value. Any claim for loss of interest, loss of value due to any exchange rate fluctuations, revaluations or devaluations are between the claiming bank and the issuing bank. Unless such losses result from the non performance of the reimbursing bank under the reimbursement undertaking. The reimburse, unless otherwise, the reimbursement, reimbursing bank has given a reimbursement undertaking and still after giving the reimbursement undertaking, that means they have agreed to honor due to some delays, they have said interest charge. Those things reimbursing bank will pay due to their fault. Otherwise, uh, if there's anything, they have to sort, it has to be sorted out between the claiming bank and the issuing bank. Right? Any more questions you want to ask? Any questions you want to ask? Right. So I have covered my last uh, presentation also. Mm. So, uh, classes the second one again, Peter. Now, turn the pulver. Hey, boy. Open the window. Let's try. Right. Mm. I want to discuss few. Uh, uh, past papers. I will upload few past papers. I will upload few past papers uh, so that um, from next week you have to do those past papers and come ready with them. To come ready with the past papers, right? Okay, now let's. Well, there are some questions. Like this, okay. 
Right. Answer the first question. Answer the first question. What is the answer? Three banking days. Three banking days, yes. Second question. What is the answer? What is the answer? C. Yes. Correct answer is C. Very good. The reason? The reimbursement should be either URR 725 or not URR. You can have a mix right okay this one must indicate which of the following. Which is the correct one? Uh, 
an issuing bank's instructions to a reimbursing bank requesting issuance of a reimbursement undertaking subject to URR 75 must indicate which of the following. Matthew, look at that. Article nine. Okay. Article nine. Okay. Kala. The latest date for. Presentation, eka tien nona, including nuisance period, right? Uh, First, take up whether the partial drawings are allowed. A big down of it. The latest date for presentation of a claim, including the use period, yes, we have to put the expiry date of the document claim. No. We are not doing, uh, we, we are not responsible for claiming money. Then the claiming bank must certify compliance with the credit terms. No. Then the answer is B. Three only. Three only. Right? Okay. This one. A reimbursing bank has received a valid claim under its reimbursement undertaking and is simultaneously instructed by the issuing bank not to honor the claim. In accordance with the URR 725, how should the reimbursing bank proceed? The reimbursing bank has received a valid claim under its reimbursement undertaking and is simultaneously instructed by the issuing bank not to honor the claim. How should the reimbursing bank proceed? A, B, C, or D. What is the correct answer? Any luck? The correct answer is C. The last moment if they, they if the issuing bank changes the instructions, they don't care. It should honor the claim and debit the issuing bank's account. This is the risk involved in this. 
right? You should not give reimbursement authorizations uh, for unknown customers, right? The issuing bank has to take the risk. In the event that the reimbursing bank does not honor a claim under reimbursement authorization, for which no reimbursement undertaking has been issued, who is responsible under URR 725 for the interest in the delay in reimbursement? Who is responsible? Hmm? Who is responsible? If they are not paying and due to that issues, there was a delay and the customer is asking for interest charges, who has to pay? Beneficiary, issuing bank, reimbursing bank or claiming bank. Quickly, may I ask a question again? Issuing bank. Issuing bank. bank. Right? Okay. I think these questions are good, which has given you some uh, structuring of trade finance facilities. Shall we do at least? I think we have done only one. Am I correct? Can we can we do the second one? Can we can you do the second one? Quick click around the one. Monthly single import shipment of US dollars 100,000 each month under LC terms payable 90 days from the date of shipment. How about you? Have you done this one as homework? How many people have done this? Hmm? How many people have done this? We have done the exam pass in the bed. But a class ke karanda the pawe na ogulo angeng response ke netta. Right? The class ke karanda na pulo ang if you are responding, if you are not responding. And when I ask you to do the uh, exercises and get ready, then we will be discussing the answers. That's a different thing. If you are not doing, it's a different thing. Draw the single straight line and do it immediately. I'll give you five minutes is more than enough. Lila facilities take other one monthly single import ship of US dollars 100,000 each month under LC terms payable 90 days from the date of shipment. 90 days from the date of shipment. DC to be issued 30 days prior to the date of shipment. 30 days prior to the date of shipment. That means one month before the shipment. Then Goods will be received by TCP Limited 30 days from the shipment date. Then it will take another one month to receive the goods. Right? Then after that, 
the payment has to be done. Payment has to be done. We have to arrange the facility. Uh, when we receive the documents, we have to accept the bill. We have to accept the bill. Then we have to give an acceptance facility. Accept the bill and those bills should be paid after how many days? Should be paid after how many days? Huh? Hello. 90 days. 90 days from? Shipment date. 90 days from the shipment date. So when you accept the draft, then after how many months you have to pay the payment? 60 days. 60 days. Very good. 60 days. Because one month has already passed. Goods are sold immediately in the local market for 120,000 on 90 days credit. So you'll be getting the money in 90 days time. There are monthly overhead expenses that the bank is required to finance amount to US dollars 5,000 from the date of receipt of first shipment. You are required to structure a package of facilities to meet the customer's requirement especially each type of facility and the revolving limit need, needed for each facility with reasons. For each financial facility, state the security documentation to be taken and any special conditions that you would lay down. Right? Okay. Assume US dollar 1 is equal to LKR 200. First, you have to draw the Straight line, right? You have to draw a straight line. Then mark what are the things. One month before the shipment date, US dollars hundred thousand, right? Then it will take another one month for the shipment. So altogether, what is the uh, lead time of the LC? Lead time of the LC. When we open a LC, how long it will take to get the goods and the documents? 60 days. 60 days, two months. So that means if you want to if you want to open LCs on a monthly basis, LCs on a monthly basis, then uh, when we open one LC, it will take two months to get the documents and to reverse the LC liability. But the shipment has to be done on a monthly basis. Every month we have to get the uh, stuff. Then we need two facilities for the LCs because when we open one, it will take two months because of that right we accept the bill and we have to pay the bill after two months right uh, then but we will be getting the money only after 90 days that means three months so we'll have to give them an import loan to settle the bill accepted bill but an import loan is enough for one month because after the end of the month, we will be getting the money, $120,000, right? So what is the facility one, issuance of LC? Facility one, issuance of LC. How much? US dollars, 100,000 into two. Any questions? Why we have taken two? Any questions? Why we have taken two? Goods receiving huh? on second month. Yeah, goods receive goods and documents both will be receiving on the second month. Once we open one LC, it will take two months. Then 
if you want to get goods on a monthly basis, then we have to have uh, two such facilities, 100,000 into two US dollars, 200,000. Right? They make a Tawakalak Tina Mang Hadapunatika, Egola Hadagan. The facility we'll have to give to them, uh, we'll have to show in dollars or rupees. The rupees. facility we have to show them rupees. It's one more than one. Make a go line, nigga, Liana. US dollars, two hundred thousand into two hundred. You're in. Forty million rupees. Right? Then second one. Acceptance of import big. Tianban. I'm going to get this like a bomb. We have to run here. What is the bill value? Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand into two. Two. Into two. Yeah. Lead time is two. Right? 100,000 into 2. Into 200. Acceptance facility at the end of 40 million. Then import loan to settle accepted bills. Import loan to settle accepted bills. Then Yanaban, then Katabari and Kanabulum. US dollars. What is the lead ten? One. One. One month. One month. Hundred thousand into one month. US dollars. Uh, Hundred thousand. In Sri Lanka rupees, US dollars 100,000 into 220 million. Right? Any other facilities? How do you put it? 5,000 again. Old draft or short term loan, import loan name and may short term loan for clearing charges. For clearing charges, there is US dollars 5,000 into how many times? Three times. Three times. Five into three, US dollars, 15,000. Very good. Very good. Right? Okay. Make a current amount of gala. Amount and term, single export shipment of Euro 100,000. Under LC terms, payable 120 days, DA terms. Right? 120 days, DA terms. In order to manufacture product, Sigma Limited have to import raw material from Seoul, Korea. Payment for raw materials to be made under users DC 90 days from shipment, 90 days from shipment. Import DC of raw materials to be issued four weeks before the date of shipment, one month before the shipment. And then it will take another one month to receive the document. Right? There are one month year of summer except currently. Uh, it has to be paid in another 60 days time, another two months time. Right? Very much similar to the previous one. For each export shipment, raw materials required amount to Euro 80,000. Okay. 
each DC for the raw materials, each, each DC for the import of raw materials will cover the requirements for one export shipper. One export shipper. The clearing charges and custom duty, Euro 5000 per shipment, uh, Euro 5000 per shipment will have to be paid on arrival of goods. Time taken to manufacture the goods and export them will be four months from receiving the raw materials. Right? Okay. Questions. You are required to structure a package of financial facilities for the purpose of servicing this order, indicating the basis on which the revolving limit nearly unknown basis. The facilities shall be made available in Sri Lanka rupees, assuming the rate of exchange to be 1 euro equals to 210. Okay. First, we'll one month before the shipment, we'll have to open the LC. Then it will take another one month to receive the goods and the documents. And at that time, we have to accept the draft to be paid after another two months time because altogether 90 days from shipment one month has already passed so after two months we'll have to pay but we don't have money because the shipment the export manufacturing process will take about four months so we'll have to get a import loan for another two months because there will be another uh, similar bill payment on the following month also. lead time Then to get the money, it will be four months, 120 days. Right? Okay. In that case, first do the issuance of LC. Do Hariputari. May Panthi then Nikino Antana Naman than Angela, a dinner cannabis and Dagala. It went to again. I'm starting the nine euro eighty thousand. Two months. Eighty thousand, two months. Very good. Two months. Right? I'll be the nether and deep time again. Two months, euro hundred and sixty. Then uh, euro hundred and sixty thousand into two hundred and ten. Thirty-three point six million. Thirty-three point six million. Right. Then we have to do the acceptance. We have to do the acceptance of import bill. What's the amount? So, what is the name of 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 the name the purpose of the name the reasons and purpose of the name the name of the will be for 8,000 euro to be open one month before the shipment and the shipment will take another one month. Right? Therefore, therefore the LC lead time is uh, two, two months. Therefore, uh, the, fa the facility required, LC facility required is for 80,000 into two euro hundred and six thousand. Okay, issuance of usance LC ninety days usance LC issuance of ninety days usance LC. That's what you asked me now. Yes, sir. All yeah, right. Okay. Then acceptance of import bill. Then what is the answer? Euro three thousand into two. 
உங்களுக்கு ரங்க ஆப்பிவா ஃபாரெக்ஸ் அப்படி நெக்ஸ்ட் வீக் இவரை பாராட்டு இது வசதியில் பாஸ் பேப்பர்ஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் பண்ண நம்ம தெரியும் ஓகே